bam, the greater good, here we go, the next installment of the Psychic Awakening series that we've got going on here, in this one we get to see the addition for the Tau, the Gene Stealer Cult, and the Astra Militarum, including some special, special tidbits for the uh, Tempesta Scions specifically. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Glacial Geek preview of the books coming out this week. These are going on sale uh, or going on pre-order today. Uh, pick up. You can send in your pre-order uh, today and it'll be out next week. Uh, so let's dig in right now and check out what's going on. So once again, I'm not going to spoil any of the uh, of the lore that's going on with these. We'll kind of go through it. Uh, again, a really great looking book. Um, I'm really loving the art that they've been doing with these. It makes it look super awesome and I'm glad that they've been continuing with it. Uh, I'm not going to go into the lore, like I said again. I'll let you guys check that out. Uh, I don't think that's, I, you know, you don't want to see that spoiled. Getting the idea of what the rules are going to be is a whole other thing, though. So, once again, they've got all the different stuff. Beautiful pictures, beautiful art, and a really cool story that they've got going on. I really like what they're doing. I know a lot of people like to complain about whatever's happening, but I, on the other hand, am a big fan of everything that they've been doing with the Psychic Awakening. Uh, all the rules that they've been adding don't feel uh, broken. They feel strong. And they feel like they really add a lot to the armies, which I think is exactly what you want from uh, a lot of these rule books. So, <clears throat> getting into it. Again, like all the other ones, they have their different ways of playing the game. These are more narrative. They're not really designed for match play stuff. These are meant to be uh, to have a fun, uh, fun games that you get to play along with what's going on with the Psychic Awakening, talking about the different stuff that they've got going on here. So, uh, the Echoes of War story. So, the Echoes of War is really what they got going on there. So... Let's get into the rules now. So we've got here for the Tau Empire will be the first ones that we've got uh, getting into. Uh, the first thing that they've got here is they talk about the different stuff here. So they have this uh, the <clears throat> name generator, obviously, which is always fun. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, then we've got uh, they've got the rules for Commander Shadow Sun with the new model that she's got coming out, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we've got the set tenets that they've got coming out, prototype weapon systems, which we'll get into. And then they've got their stratagems, the eight and the Farsight Enclaves, which is another way to run them. So there's a completely separate way to run them, which is, I think, pretty awesome and cool. So let's figure out the Tau name generator. Uh, I am going to be of the, uh, I'm going to be Fio, so I'm Ar uh, Earth. That seems appropriate for me. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, Fio Nidris, uh, Fio, Fio La Nidris, I think that's how it works. The Tau name is multi-part. Probably it's in the state of the cast they were born into. So we're going to go Fio, and then the second component of the Tau bears rank. So I'm going to be a, um, let's see, I'll be a noble. So Fio L, why not? <laughs> Fio L, um, Fio L, Furios, Shamasa. That sounds good to me. <laughs> anyway, so going into here. So we've got Shadow, Commander Shadow Sun now. Um, the new model looks fantastic. I really like what they did with it. Um, and let's kind of go over some of the rules that they've got here. So she's got her drones that she's got going along here. Uh, she's got her dispersed uh, fusion blasters, flechette launchers, high energy fusion blaster, blaster, the whole nine yards that she usually gets here. Um, so uh, we've got the greater good, master of war. Uh, she's got all those war rules there. Defender of the greater good, when a model would lose any wounds as a result of an attack, while this model is within three inches of a friendly stealth battlesuit unit, that unit can attempt to intercept the attack. Roll 1d6 on a 2 plus, the model does not lose the wound, and that unit suffers uh, and that unit suffers one mortal wound for each of those wounds. Only one attempt can be made to intercept each attack. So now, what's, which is kind of interesting for this, she so has the same stuff as with the, uh, like they do with the uh, the drones, so that, you know, the, to pass off the drone uh, abilities, the uh, savior protocol that they've got there. But instead, now they've also got here uh, with stealth battlesuits, which is pretty cool. Supreme Commander, this model can be included in a Tau Empire detachment without preventing other units in the detachment from gaining a set tenant. So note, however, this model does not benefit from any set tenant unless the set tenant selected for that detachment is coordinated fire arcs. Uh, so basically, she's Tau, specifically Tau, uh, but you can take her in anything without preventing other people from taking the set tenants. Uh, so it allows you to take her in any of the armies without it uh, upsetting it. So where previously she could only be in Tau detachments, she can now be in any detach in any army uh, detachment without uh, upsetting it. So it's basically like they had with the uh, the Inquisitors that were allowed to be uh, included with the with the Space Marines and not upset their their chapter tactics. You can take uh, Commander Shadow Sun as well, which I think is pretty cool. 
Uh, when you set up this model and this accompany drones during deployment, they can be set up anywhere in the battlefield that is more than 12 inches away from the enemy deployment zone and any enemy model. So you can pa you can move her up on the board, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure you necessarily want to. I know she's really a beat stick that she can do, but at the same time, I don't think she's such a beat stick that she can just like stick out there on her own. So it's kind of cool. I mean, you know, very very thematic, but you know, I don't I don't know if I'd, you'd want to do that. Genius of Cayun. Uh, once per battle, this model can declare Cayun, even if Cayun or Monka has already been declared. Monka and Cayun cannot be both declared in the same turn. So that's kind of cool. Um, I mean, the same thing that she's always had there. Uh, command link drone, start of your shooting phase. Friendly command link drone model with this, uh, that is within three inches of the model. Select one friendly Tau Empire unit within 12 inches of that model until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made by a model in the Tau Empire unit. You can reroll a hit roll of one. So rerolling ones, which is pretty good, always fun to have there. Masters do that a lot for the Dark Angels. I guess captains, sorry, that's the more <laughs> generic a Space Marine version there. Um, then you got drone support. Well, so the uh, model is set up on the battlefield. Its company drone models are set up in unit coherency with it. From that point onward, the drone models are treated as a separate unit, which is kind of cool. I mean, the same thing. They've always had uh, camouflage fields when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against this model or any accompany drones subtract one from the hit roll. So minus one to hit, which is pretty good. Doesn't have a range either, so it's not like the uh, Raven Guard over 12 inches of the LA Tog over 12, 12 inches. You could be three inches away from her. Still minus one to hit uh, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon, which is kind of cool. I guess even if you're in close combat and you try to shoot her with a bolt pistol, it's a ranged weapon. So again, minus one to hit. Um, and uh, XV-22 uh, Stalker Battlesuit. This model has a five plus invul save. So that's pretty cool. The command link, uh, the... Um, the command link drone uh, has you know greater good and savior protocols, as uh, always as all of them do. So pretty cool. I like this stuff. I think she's a pretty cool model. Uh, really looks cool, and and I think with the new model that they've got there, it's going to be super awesome. So now let's get into the set tenets. So basically, what this allows you to do is make your own set. Uh, so like they did previously with the space marines making your own chapters, you can now do it with the tau with their own set, which is pretty awesome. So essentially, what you do is you make up your own set and then you can uh, create it by taking two rules that uh, from the following list so let's start over we started with this beginning here we've got turbo jets add one to advanced rolls made for jetpack units with this tenant add two inches to the move characteristic of jetpack models in this tenant so if they advance they're basically moving three inches uh further than they would without this ability which is pretty cool uh makes them even more mobile even though you know tower notorious for castling up having that ability to then at the end of the game just shoot out and jump onto objectives is super, super good ability there. So you'll have an additional three inches to help you get to where you need to be. Uh, dedication to the cause. Add one to the leadership characters of models with this tenant. That's not bad. Uh, soldiers in arms. Increase the range for the greater good ability to nine inches for this unit, uh, to units with this tenant. That's pretty good. Nine inches for greater good. Uh, the amount of overwatch that you're just going to be able to put pump out because of that is super awesome and you know it's going to be hard to keep you it'd be super easy to keep your units within nine inches of each other so that basically your whole castle there is going to be able to fire overwatch when you're trying to charge in so you know things like the uh like gene stealer cult's ability to uh cast the psychic power uh what's it called uh ma mass hypnosis to keep them from being able to fire overwatch sure that one unit can't fire overwatch but now every unit within nine inches of them is going to be firing overwatch oof Brutal, 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 brutal. Sure enough, if you know, if you get that one charge and they pop everyone there, then you can charge with someone else from the other side. But at the same time, not bad, not bad at all. Um, I think that's going to be a pretty popular one for people taking. We've got stabilization stabilization systems. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a battle suit model in this tenant, uh, that model does not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. That's pretty good. Uh, makes it um, pretty cool if you want to be more mobile with your tau. Uh, especially if you, you know, if you combine that with turbo jets, having super mobile tab would be, I think, super fun to be able to jump around the board, uh, moving these battle suits and not suffering the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. Um, so I'd take it. I think it's a pretty awesome, awesome ability there. Then we've got hardened warheads. Uh, when resolving an attack made with a high yield missile pod, missile pod, seeker missile, or smart missile system from the model with this tenant, improve the armor penetration characters of the weapon by one for the attack. So plus one AP to all the missile attacks, which is pretty awesome. Um, sophisticated command net when resolving an attack made by a vehicle model with this tenant against a unit that has one or more marker-like counters, reroll a wound roll of one. 
So re-rolling ones to wound uh, with vehicles. That would be kind of cool with, um, uh, what's his face, the the uh, the hammerhead, the hammerhead, uh, the tanks that they've got there. Who's the, the special character? I can't remember the character. But that would be kind of cool with him uh, and just go with like a, a mech-heavy Tau force. I think that would be kind of fun to see that on the table. Hybridized weaponry. Add four inches to the range characteristics of assault and grenade weapons models of this tenant are equipped with. This is not applied to prototype weapon systems, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I'm super happy with my Dark Angels getting an additional range with their uh, their Super Doctrine. So anytime that you can increase the range, what it does is it makes it harder for your opponent to try to maneuver around you and outrange you and keep you from being able to do what you need to do. Uh, it's also super helpful when you apply it again with the... Um, uh, with the uh, the soldiers in arms increase in the range for the greater good, because now that four extra four inches might help you get those shots for Overwatch, since you still need to be in range to fire the Overwatch shots. But now you can be nine inches of the unit, and you have that extra four inches to try to reach the uh, the models that are trying to charge into it. So th th that combination would be kind of cool if you're really thinking about castling there. Uh, gifted pilots, if in your movement phase, a vehicle or monster model with this tenant does not move or moves a distance less than half of its move characteristic till the end of the turn when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon of that model, reroll a wound roll of one. So rerolling ones to wound if you don't move or if you move half. So it's sort of like the grinding advance for the uh, Lehman Russes. Um, basically, vehicles and monsters now get to reroll ones to wound if they don't move. So if you're castling, rerolling ones on all of your battle suits because they're the, the like the... Um, the Riptides and stuff like that, they're all monsters. So I think that would be kind of cool. I mean, kind of cool. That's super awesome, especially if you're going to be castling. So something, a combination of that and maybe the four-inch range uh, would be super, super beneficial to, to combo there. You got advanced power cells. Tactical drone models with this tenant have a move characteristic of 10 inches. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, being able to get them where you need them to be uh, to either slough off wounds or to, to try to cause havoc and create screens to keep the opponent from getting in on you is pretty good. Maneuvering thrusters, a battlesuit unit with this tenant can advance when it falls back. So that's kind of cool. If you get charged in, you just advance out of combat as opposed to just keep getting caught up in further combats moving on. Um, and then you've got up upgunned. Burst cannons models with this tenant are equipped with have an armor penetration characteristic of a minus one. So minus one to your burst cannons. I could see that being cool if you just really want to uh, spam out burst cannons. So getting a bunch of suits with burst cannons. Um, uh, it says burst cannons, so not heavy burst cannons, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, unless they, they specify. I think they... Because they specify over here, like they've got high yield missile pods and missile pod. So that just says burst cannons. But, I mean, there's plenty of, of models that you can put the burst cannons on. If you want to go up, that's just all... A lot of DAC at minus one makes a big difference. I know there's a lot of people who have uh, different abilities, but it, I think... Once you start throwing out those minus ones, it can really make a big difference there. All right, so let's get into the prototype weapon system. So basically, uh, this is sort of like in the um, this is like uh, like the like the Tyranids had, where instead of taking a um, a warlord trait, um, so if your Tau Empire character in your, is your warlord, rather than giving uh, one of your Tau Empire character models a signature uh, system from Codex Tau Empire. You can elect uh, to select a prototype weapon system for one Tau Empire unit from your army. Uh, so basically, it allows you to give instead, like it's, it's basically like the Tyranids. Like I said, instead of having them take a warlord, instead of giving a warlord trait, you get to give a unit something special. So, um, and it replaces. It, it, there are some that replace certain ones. So you still have to pay the points for those first ones to replace them. It's the same thing as any kind of relic, really. Um, oh no, no, signature systems models a signature system. Is signature system like their their relics? I can't remember. I don't know. I'm not I'm not too super well versed on Tau. Maybe these are just basically more relics that you can give to regular units as opposed to characters. Maybe that's what this is about. I'm not too sure. I can't remember. I don't I don't know if um, signature systems are their are their warlord traits or if they're the relics. So regardless, it replaces instead of the signature system, you're giving the prototype weapon system, and the prototype weapon system can go to someone who's not a character. So it doesn't have to be a character. Um, so uh, let's start off here. We've got reactive countermeasures. It's the first one. Battle suit model with uh, air bursting fragmentation projector only. Uh, ranged weapons with an armor penetration characteristic of minus one or minus two are treated as having an armor penetration characteristic of zero when resolving attacks against a model with this weapon system. That's pretty cool. So uh, it's ignoring AP minus one and AP minus two. 
Uh, so it's sort of like that sister build that has the that has that ability, except it's a it's only one battle suit. But if you pop that onto one of your you know one of your big boys, uh, it, it would be super helpful. Especially now with all of the uh, space marines having the ability with their the doctrines of increasing AP on things. Um, I mean, it ignores almost everything except until you get into some of the heavier weapon stuff, which is awesome. Um, then you've got uh, Fusion Obliterator, uh, XV-95 Ghost Keel Battle Suit model only. This weapon system replaces a Fusion Collider and has the following profile. Uh, Fusion Obliterator, 24 inches, heavy 3, strength 9, AP minus 4, D6 damage. Resolve an attack made with this weapon against a unit within half, that's within half range. Roll we'll, we'll one additional D6, so it basically gets the Melter Rule. AP minus 4, Melter Rule, strength 9, heavy 3, 24 inches. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. Um, and especially now, you know, if you have them up there and all the shenanigans that you can do with uh, ghost with ghost kill battle suits, that could be super effective. And then you've got advanced EM uh, EM scrambler XV ninety five ghost kill battle suit model only. Enemy units that are set up set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot be set up within twelve inches of this model. So again, uh, this is sort of going into the new ways that they have these rules to to prevent uh, deep striking units from being able to get in and close combat especially for tau you don't want to be caught up in close combat if you can just have a you know an all-out gunfight that's what tau do best and i think that this now gives you the ability to pop out people like 12 inches out from you sort of like they have with the uh the infiltrators though the yeah infiltrators i think that's the infiltrators for the uh the space marines i can't remember the name you know the ones i'm talking about outside of 12 you have to keep say outside of 12 inches again it's only on one ghost kill battle suit but still if you're going to be going up against like a Gene Stealer Cult army, you could pop him in the front there and then try to screen out with uh, with drones out to the side, and it just keeps them even further away. Especially on turn, if you can if you can have them around there on turn two or turn three, I mean, it becomes very difficult for a Gene Stealer Cult to, to overcome that. Um, I know they can do the perfect ambush where they'll they'll set up outside of twelve and then move D six closer, but at that point, the closest they're getting is a six inch charge versus a three inch charge. So you know, every inch really super, super matters at that point so that's pretty cool uh high capacity uh capacitance railgun uh tx7 hammerhead gunship uh model equipped with a railgun only this weapon system replaces a railgun and has a following profile high capacitance railgun when you choose the weapon shoot with one of the following profiles solid shot is 60 inches heavy two strength 10 ap minus 4 d6 damage and then sub munitions uh 60 inches heavy 4 d3 Strength 6, AP minus 1, 1 damage. Uh, when resolving an attack made with the solid shot profile, a wound roll of 6 plus inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target in addition to any other damage. So, solid shot, you could possibly be doing uh, 9 damage per shot, so 18 damage from them with that railgun. That's pretty awesome. I like that, especially at 60 inches. Whew, who Nelly, that's super nice. I think that's super nice, especially if you pile that, uh, if you combine that um, with uh, the, which one was it? Uh, stabilization systems? Oh no, that's battle suits. Do not suffer. Right. Never mind. Never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> uh, but still, a super, super awesome there. Strength 10, AP minus uh, 4, D6 damage is, is super good. Uh, then we've got Catling Burst Cannon, Commander, XV8 Crisis Battle Suits, XV8 Crisis Bodyguards, or XV95 Ghost Kill Battle Suit unit only. This weapon system replaces each burst cannon that model in the uh, unit are equipped with and has the following profile. Range 18 inches, assault 4, strength 5, AP 0, uh, damage 1. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon, an unmodified hit roll of 6 scores 1 additional hit. So that's kind of cool. You can have, I mean, up to 8 hits with that. Pretty good, especially on all if you have a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of crisis battle suits with, with the burst cannons. I think that could be super fun to be able to just put out a whole bunch of DACA. You've got Network mortar, uh, Marker Lights, Pathfinder Team Unit Only. Weapon System replaces each Marker Light that uh, models in this unit are equipped with. It has the following profile. 36 inches, Assault 1. So no longer heavy. Ooh, that's super nice. That's super nice. You can have that one unit that you could be mobile with. Get them up to where you need to to get those, uh, to get those um, Marker Lights on there with Assault 1, which is super, super nice. Because that's always the problem is like once they start moving... Once you start, uh, the game starts moving on and they have to start moving, they start losing their ability to get those marker lights where they need to uh, because of the fact that once they move, their already pretty bad ballistic skill becomes even worse. So I like that one. Uh, then you've got Annihilation Warheads, 
X, uh, KV-128 Storm Surge model only. When resolving an attack made with a Destroyer missile in this model, if it scores a hit, do not roll to determine the number of mortal wounds suffered by the target unit. That unit suffers three mortal wounds. So, that's pretty cool. If you, I, I mean, I don't know. I think some of the other ones are better. But if you run a heavy Storm Surge uh, list and you just want to have the ability to just pop off with those Destroyer missiles, that could be pretty cool. Accelerated Photon Grenades. Unit with Photon Grenades only. This weapon system replaces each Photon Grenade in the model... Uh, that models in the unit are equipped with as the following profile. Uh, range 12, grenade D6, uh, This we- and then dash, dash, dash. Uh, this weapon can only target infantry units when resolving an attack made with this weapon. If it, uh, can only target infantry units. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, if a hit is scored, do not make a wound roll. Instead, the target is shocked until the start of the next turn. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon, buy a model from a shocked unit. Subtract one from the hit roll. In addition, shocked units cannot advance, and any charge rolls made uh, for shocked units are halved. So that's kind of cool, uh, especially if you are going up against, like I said, Gene Steeler Colt or uh, maybe Blood Angels, anything that's very aggressive and wants to get you know right up in your face. 12-inch range on these uh, grenades, D6, you just have to get a hit. So if you overwatch with them, suddenly now their ra- their charges charge rolls are halved, and their, um, their charge rolls are halved, and they're minus one to hit uh, with uh, melee weapons. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then you've got Crosslink Stabilizer Jets, Commander, XV-8 uh, Crisis Battle Suit, or XV-8 Crisis Bodyguards o- units only. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in this unit, reroll hit rolls of 1 and reroll wound rolls of 1. Reroll and hit and wound rolls of 1 for that unit. That's pretty cool. Commanders can be super brutal with that. Uh, and then if you get some Crisis Battle Suit units up there with that, I think it'd be pretty fun. I think that'd be that'd be a pretty good one to have. you got Magnum uh, Rail Rifle. Uh, XV-88 Broadside Battle Suits, unit only. This weapon replaces each heavy rail rifle model. Uh, models in this unit are equipped with and has the following profile. Uh, Magna Rail Rifle, 60 inches, heavy 2, strength 9, AP-4, D6 damage. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, a wound roll of 6+, plus inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon, a damage roll of 1 or 2 counts as 3 instead. So, suddenly now with strength 9, your auto wounding auto wounding oh yeah you're auto wounding everything that is t8 or lower that's pretty cool uh you know heavy two there auto wounding and then sixes it does an additional mortal wound d6 damage whoo put that on like a six man uh broadside squad with the rail rifles and suddenly now they're pumping out you know what is that 12 shots uh, strength uh, strength nine, so you're wounding every most things on threes, uh, and then ones and twos count as threes. So you're basically auto wounding everything that's going to be t uh, t eight or or lower. So knights auto wounding knights and doing d six damage at AP minus four. Whew, that's pretty awesome. I like that one a lot. I think that one's going to see a lot of use. You got amplified ion accelerator, uh, riptide battle suit model only. Uh, this weapon system replaces Ion Accelerator and has the following profile. You choose which one you want to do. 72 inches on both of them. Heavy, both of them are heavy 6. Strength 8 versus Strength 9. Both AP minus 4. And then the damage is 3 or 3 plus D3. Um, so why would you... Overcharge. So each hit roll of 1 made of attacks with weapon overcharge profile. Bear suffers 1 mortal wound. So basically you're just supercharging it there. Uh, but it, But it's for an additional D3 damage. So it's not even just an additional 1. You're getting an additional D3 for each shot, and it's an additional strength. I mean, I think that it's worth it at that point to overcharge. I think you'd always overcharge, especially if you combine that. Ah, if you combine that. Didn't one of these have reroll hit rolls of one? Um, no, there are a lot of wound rolls of one. Okay, but I, um, if you have that next to, uh, if you have like a Tau next to uh, Commander Shadow Sun, doesn't she have the reroll ones, I believe? Still, pretty awesome. I like that a lot. You got high-powered incinerators, uh, battle suit uh, unit only. The weapon system replaces each flamer from that model with the unit with equipped with and the following profile. Range 8, Assault D6, Strength 4, AP 0, 1 damage. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon, do not hit roll automatically scores a hit. Um, when resolving an attack made with this weapon against units that is within half range, add 1 to the strength characters of the weapon for the attack. So that's kind of cool. At 4 inches, it's doing it's Strength 5. Not bad. I think, you know, if you have a whole bunch of flamers on them, that could be pretty... That could be pretty powerful. I like that a lot. 
All right, so let's go into the stratagems that they've gotten here. We've got Swarm Bodyguards is the first one here. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when a set XV-8 Crisis Bodyguards unit from your army is chosen to fight with. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model uh, in that unit, whilst a friendly set character unit is within three inches of that model's unit, you can reroll the hit roll and you can reroll the wound roll. Reroll the hits and wounds for one CP um, when you're within three. In close combat, sure, you probably don't want to be in close combat, but that's that's pretty cool. For one CP, that's that's super effective. Um, I like that one a lot because you're gonna make you're gonna have a miss. Odds are you're gonna miss at something. So for one CP, you're basically, if you're going to spend one CP to reroll one die, you spend that one CP in the fight phase, and now if you have two misses, you've made your points back with it, which is pretty cool. Uh, one CP for aerial targeting. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. Select one enemy unit. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model from your army against that unit, treat that unit as having one more marker-like counter than it actually has for that attack. So that's pretty cool. Uh, a good way to really amp up your um, um, to amp up your your uh, marker light ability. So if you get it and you're just like one short of what you needed, uh, you can spend that one CP and suddenly now they're going to have it. Because it says use the stratagem in your shooting phase. It doesn't say at the beginning, so you can use it whenever. So you can shoot all of your marker lights, and if you don't get what you need, you can just pop that one CP and boom, you got that extra marker light you needed. Uh, then we've got uh, deadly aim for two CP. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. When an MV-71 sniper drones unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of that phase, the armor penetration characteristic of long shot pulse rifles models in that unit are equipped with is improved by one. In addition, until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a long shot pulse rifle by a model in that unit against a unit that is within half range, the armor penetration characteristic of the weapon is improved by a further one for that attack. So if they're in half range from those uh, from those sniper drones for two CP uh, for two CP, you got AP an additional AP minus two, which is pretty good. Um, you'd probably want a big unit to really make advan take advantage of that, but still not bad. Uh, one CP wisdom of the many. Use the stratagem in your movement phase. Select one ethereal unit from your army until the end of that phase. That unit can invoke one additional elemental power using its invocation of the elements ability, so long as that elemental power has not already been invoked. By that unit in that phase so you get to that's pretty cool double double invoking which is kind of cool uh pulse onslaught use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a breacher team unit from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of that phase the range characteristics of the close range and medium range profiles of your pulse blasters models in that unit that are equipped with are increased to 15 inches so that's kind of cool uh 15 inches for pulse rifles which is pretty cool uh, then you got modular weaponry. Uh, use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a tau, uh, when a set model other than a Titanic model from your army is chosen to shoot with. Till the end of that phase, do not roll to determine the type characteristic of heavy weapons that model is equipped with. They have their maximum values. So for one CP, their heavy weapons don't have to roll to d like the, so for d6 shots. So for instance, like a Yavara with those flamers, you're automatically maxing out. For one CP. Pretty good. Actually, no. Super good. That's super, super good. I think that's going to be brutal with Yavara. Because our Yavara are already super brutal. And now you can just pop them down there and just make sure that you max out the number of, uh, of shots that you've got on that. Oof. Oof. That's real good. That's real good. Um, then you've got... Uh, that was modulated weaponry. Then you've got Reign of Fire. Use this strategy in your shooting phase when a Vespid Sting Wing... Uh, Stingwing's unit from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in that unit. If that unit was set up on the battlefield using the plunge from the sky ability that turn, you can reroll the hit roll. So rerolling hit rolls for Vespids um, for 1 CP when they deep strike in. That's not bad. Um, 2 CP for coordinated engagement. Uh, when this, uh, Use this strategy in your shooting phase. Select 1 XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit or XV-8 Crisis Bodyguard unit from your army and select one enemy unit. Until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit or XV-8 Crisis Bodyguards unit against the enemy unit, treat that enemy unit as having five marker-like counters. So that's pretty cool for two CP, auto five on a unit for, it's it's only again for one you know Crisis Battlesuit or Crisis Bodyguard unit, true, but if you really need to take them down for two CP, that sounds pretty good to me. 
Uh, then for one CP, you've got ambushing predators. Use the stratagem in your opponent's in your opponent's charge phase. Select one crew unit from your army. Until the end of that phase, that unit can perform a heroic intervention as if it was a character. In addition, if that unit performs a heroic intervention in that phase, it can do so if there are any enemy units within six inches of them instead of three inches, and when doing so, can move up to six instead of three. So basically, you can have crew that get to heroically intervene, which is pretty awesome. Um, so if your opponent was running, uh, was trying to avoid the crew, you can get him into combat there. Or if you're just getting over overrun and you really want to get some crew in, uh, get some shots in with some crew, you get to do that, which is pretty cool. Uh, one CP for seasoned sniper. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. Select one fire sight marksman model from your army until the end of that phase. Range weapons that model is equipped with can target a character unit, even if it is not the closest enemy unit. So that's pretty cool. Um, use the strand to shoot face like one fire sight marksman you know, from your army till the end of the phase. Range weapons that models equipment. So you can use fire sight marksman with a, with a sniper ability, which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of wonder if they were using the like the marker lights. I don't know. I, I'm sure there's got to be uses for it. That it's pretty cool. Anytime you get to have the sniper ability on anything is is always a nice bonus to have there. So for that's for one CP. Then one CP you've got hidden hunters. I use a strategy at the start of your opponent's shooting phase. Select one crew unit from your army till the end of that phase. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against that unit, whilst it is receiving uh, the benefit of cover, subtract one from hit rolls and add one to the saving throw. So, if they're in cover, they're going to have an additional one to their saving. So it's basically like giving them for one CB, giving them uh, camo cloaks. Um, basically, giving them camo cloaks and then also giving them. A minus one to hit, which is pretty cool for one CP. Um, so you've got pack alpha up here, so for one CP, and that'd be kind of cool to to pair it up with the ambushing predators. So if you run them up there and you plan to try to get them into combat, uh, and they try to shoot them off before they can get in, you keep you you pop that to keep them alive, and then you spend the one CP to have them heroically intervene into combat in your opponent's phase, which is pretty cool. Uh, one CP pack alpha. Use the stratagem before the battle. Select one Crute sh uh, Shaper model from your army until the end of the battle when making an advance roll or charge roll for a friendly Crute unit within six inches of that model. Roll one additional D6 and discard one of the dice. So that's kind of cool. So 3D6 charging, choosing the two highest if you want within six inches. Not bad, especially if you're running a Crute heavy list. I can see that being super effective. Then you got uh, one CP for Raging Beasts. Uh, use the strategy when a Crutox rider or unit from your army is chosen to fight with in the fight phase. Till the end of that phase, models in that unit have an attack characteristic of 4. In addition, till the end of that phase, the armor penetration characteristic of Crutox fist models in that unit are equipped with and improved by 2. So AP 0 becomes AP minus 2. That's not bad. That's pretty cool. Um, so 4 attacks at AP minus 2. That's not bad. I like that a lot. For 1 CP, uh, I mean... I could see its use. I could definitely see its use. Um, especially it would be kind of fun if you uh, heroically intervene them and they weren't ready for it. I think that'd be fun. Uh, point blank volley. Use the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select one set unit from your army until the end of the phase. Pulse blasters, pulse carbines, and pulse rifle models in this unit are equipped with have the type characteristic of pistol 2. An additional to the end of the phase, models in the unit uh, cannot be affected by the volley fire uh Model cannot be affected by the volley fire ability. So you can't volley fire with them when they do it, but they get to shoot. If you're in, locked in combat, you can shoot with your pulse uh, pul with your uh, pulse blasters, pulse carbines, and pulse rifles as if they were pistols, which is pretty cool. And um, pistol two, so two shots each. That could be super effective, especially if you're running like a like a big squad of of, um, of strike uh, strikes. Oh, not stri are they strike? What are they called? The little troop guys. Oh, man, my brain is just completely mushed from that. I can't remember what it's called. But the little dude bros, the regular dude bros that they got there, you've been a big squad of them. Have them locked in combat because your opponent's probably going to want to charge them. Uh, and, they, and especially if they're trying to do something like they, you know, where they wrap the one model uh, to try to keep them protected. So, they, you know, they, they string it out, they scoot around you so you're outside of one inch, and then they punch with just their regular fists into you. Don't kill anything and then just scoot around and lock you into combat so you can't back out. You pop that and now all of a sudden you're shooting them and then I expected that. Uh, so they become a little less effective and uh, for what they wanted to do, which is fun. It stops the, the basically for them trying to protect themselves from your shooting phase. 
Then you got uh, Compromising Pupil. Uh, use this one CP. Use the stratagem before the battle. After nominating your Warlord, select one set character model from your army that does not have a Warlord trait and determine one, um, one Warlord trait for it. Uh, it is regarded as your Warlord for the purpose of the Warlord trait. Each Warlord trait in your army must be unique. So that's kind of cool. Just like the usual stuff that they've been giving out where you can give an extra Warlord trait to someone. So pretty good stuff there. And then we've got the 8. So I know they came out with the rules for them before. But it just kind of goes over who the eight are, the Commander Farsight, and all of his uh, his friendly uh, battle suit dude bros here. And then it has using the eight in battle, uh, including the eight in your army. Dash sheets for the eight can be found on page 48. Um, um, 48 through 49. If your army is battleforged, you can only include this data sheet uh, in a super heavy auxiliary detachment. If you do, the command benefits for the detachment are changed to minus three command points and you cannot give any model in your army a signature system. Uh, this is to take account for the signature systems that are already equipped in the various members of the eight, effectively the emergency dispensation stratagem that automatically um, uh, has automatically been used to give the eight the various signature systems they require. Um, match play rules, uh, uh, the match play rules that restrict the number of commander units allowed in each detachment do not apply to the, the eight detachment. Uh, commander Farsight, if you include the eight in your army, then you cannot also include the Commander Farsight data sheet from there. So you can't have two Commander Farsights. Um, furthermore, if you include the eight in your army, Commander Farsight must be one of your uh, must be your army's warlord, and he has the following warlord trait: Hero of the Enclaves. Uh, the, this warlord can perform a heroic intervention if there are any enemy units within six inches of them instead of three inches, and when doing so, can move six inches instead of three. If this warlord makes a charge move, is charged, or performs a heroic intervention. Until the end of the turn, then re when resolving an attack made by this warlord, you can reroll the hit roll. So he gets to reroll when, when at the first round of combat, which is pretty cool. I guess unless he is piled into, but regardless, that's still pretty cool. And then you got the points value. Play in a match play game or a game that uses a points limit, then the points value for the eight is found below. Simply add this to the cost of your other models. Um, add this to the cost of your other models and the war gear they are equipped with to determine your army's total point value. Uh, this includes the war gear for them, so you can take the eight. It comes with the eight characters and fourteen drones for eleven hundred twenty points. Um, so you just have them, and they basically become their own detachment with minus three uh, minus three command points to bring them in there. Abilities: the following abilities apply to several of the eight. Master of War: once per battle at the start of your turn, single Farsight Enclave's commander unit from your army can declare either Kayun or Monka. And then it's got the Mon uh, Kayun abilities there, and then it's got Monka abilities. Unless stated otherwise, you can only use the Master of War ability once per battle, irrespective of how many models in your army have this ability. Set Tenant. If your army is Battleforged, all models in the 8th detachment gain the following Set Tenant. Uh, devastating Counter-Strike. When resolving an attack made with a uh, ranged weapon by a model from this Tenant against a unit within 6 inches, you can reroll a Wound Roll of 1. Um, so that's pretty cool, rerolling Wound Rolls of 1 uh, for ranged weapons within 6 inches. And then you got Enclave, Enclave Drone Support. When a character from the 8 is set up on the battlefield, any accompanying drone models are set up unit coherency with it. So the same thing that they've got there. Um, from this point onward, those drone models are treated as a separate unit with the HQ battle. Oh, with the HQ battlefield role and are considered to have power rating of 0. Uh, save your protocols when resolving an attack made against Farsight Enclave's infantry. Uh, infantry or Farsight Enclave's battle suit units, whilst the drone was within three inches of friendly Enclave drones. Um, unit, if the wound roll is successful, it can do all the droney stuff. So then they got all the rules for their weapons here. And then, basically, you just have the one 56 power level uh, data sheet here with all of their abilities that they've got here. So they've all got a bunch of different stuff here, which is pretty cool. I like it a lot. I think it's pretty fun that they've got that. Um, you know, that you can now run them officially, which is pretty great. Um, oh, Vesa, what is it? So, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, the movement is star. Why is the movement star? What does that mean? Oh, oh, Vesa stuff was up there. Never mind. Sorry, my bad. I didn't see the second thing up there for Ovesa, but they've got all the abilities here, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've got all the different things that they come with. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's kind of fun that they've got, you know, points for it and how you use it. And that you can bring them officially as a single detachment, uh, which is pretty great, uh, with the um, the Farsight Enclaves. So then, 
get into more of it, you can just run the far side enclaves themselves. So you don't just have to take the eight, you can take far side enclaves and of themselves. Match play rule commanders. If you play a match play game with a battle forged army, you include no more than two far side enclaves commander units in each detachment. So that's kind of cool. Instead of just the one, you could do two if you're running uh, far side enclaves. Um, and obviously, if you run the other one, you've just got all of those ones, which is pretty cool. Abilities. All Farsight Enclaves units in Codex Tau Empire gain the Aggressive Footing ability. Aggressive Footing, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model in this unit against an enemy unit within 12 inches, treat that enemy unit as having one more marker like counter than it actually has. Then we've got some specific Farsight Enclave stratagems. Uh, if your army is battleforged and includes any Farsight Enclaves detachments, including auxiliary uh, support detachments, you have access to strategies below and can spend the, uh, to do them, different stuff. So one or two CP for veteran cadre. Uh, use this strategy before the battle. Select one XV-8 crisis battle suit or XV-8 crisis bodyguards unit uh, from your army that contains three models for one command point or one X, uh, XV-8 crisis battle suit or XV-8 crisis bodyguard unit from your army that contains four or more models for two command points. Models in that unit have a weapon skill characteristic of four plus and a ballistic skill characteristic of three plus. You can only use the stratagem once per battle. So you get to basically give uh, one of your units a, um, make them veterans essentially, which is pretty cool. So sort of like the veteran intercessors for space marines. Then you have uh, Furious Assault for one CP. Use the stratagem in your charge phase when a jetpack unit from your army finishes a charge move. For each model in that unit, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of that model and roll one D6. And on a three plus, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Um, that's pretty cool. So it's basically like a, uh, a Hammer of Wrath kind of ability, giving out mortal wounds when you charge in for 1 CP. Then you've got 1 CP for Danger Close. Uh, use this strategy in your shooting phase. When a Breacher Team... Oops, sorry, pardon me. Uh, breacher Team or a Strike Team unit from your... Strike Team was the one I was trying to think of. <laughs> uh, unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Till the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by, your, uh, by a model in your unit against an enemy unit within 12 inches, you can reroll the wound roll. So that might be kind of cool to pop that along with the other one that allows them to be pistols. So if you've got them locked in combat, suddenly now they're shooting them as pistols and now they're uh, obviously within 12 inches. So then you get to reroll the wound rolls. I like that combo there. 2 CP for uh, defense in numbers. Use the stratagem in the fight phase or your opponent's shooting phase. When an XV-8 crisis battle or XV-8 crisis bodyguard unit from your army is chosen as the target for an attack. Until the end of that phase, when a model in that unit would lose a wound, roll 1d6 and a 5 plus, the wound is not lost. So for 2cp, given uh, those bodyguards or the crisis battle suit units, uh, feel no pain, 5 plus feel no pain is not bad. That's actually pretty good for 2cp. And you got 1cp focus fury. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a character model from your army is chosen to shoot with. Till the end of the phase, when resolving an attack made with that uh, by that model, you can reroll the wound roll. So 1 CP for characters to reroll wound rolls in the shooting phase. That's pretty cool if you get up there and you really need to kill something. Then you got 1 CP for Firestorm. Use the stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Select up to three Tau Empire units with the flyer uh, with the flyer battlefield roll from your army. The stratagem costs one additional command point for each selected uh, unit. Uh, roll. So wait, use the stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Select up to three Tau Empire units with the Flyer Battlefield roll in your army. This stratagem costs one additional command point for each selected unit. So one CP for one, up to three CP for three. Roll one D6 for each enemy unit within three inches of any of those selected units. On a four plus, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So that's kind of cool, uh, throwing D3 mortal wounds for on a four plus. A 50-50 chance, so if you fly those Flyers up and get them all nice and tight, close around your opponent's uh, battle line there. You can just start flowing at, throwing out uh, D3 mortal wounds. And of course it says if it's um, each enemy unit within three inches of any of those units. So you can't have like three go up into the board there and, and then try to put three D3 onto one unit. It's only if uh, it's any one unit can only ever suffer it once there. So, but pretty cool there. I like that. I like that a lot. So at the end of the movement phase, it's not bad. Then they've got some relics and some warlord traits for them uh, for the far side enclave here. You've got um, the mirror codex, it's a relic. Uh, when resolving an attack made by a model with this relic against a unit that is within 18 inches, you can reroll the hit roll. Uh, not bad. So when resolving an attack made with a model with this relic against a unit that is within 18 inches, you can reroll. 
by this by a model with this. Role. Oh, so if it has the mo if it has the relic and the units with it and the enemies within 18 inches, you can reroll hit rolls. That's pretty cool. Doesn't say in shooting, so it could be used for close combat and a um, and in uh, close combat and range, which is pretty cool. Talisman of Arthas Moloch. Uh, model with this relic has a five plus invulnerable save. Model with this relic can attempt to resist one psychic power in your opponent's psychic phase in the same manner as a psyker by taking a deny the witch test. If that model is within 24 inches of the enemy model, manifesting the psychic power. So gives you the ability to uh, deny the witch, which is pretty cool. I like that. And gives a five plus invul save, so does double duty, which is pretty cool. Uh, seismic uh, fibrillator node. Once per battle, at the start of the opponent's turn, you can choose to activate this relic. If you do, until the end of that turn, when a model starts or ends a move within six inches of a model with this relic, roll 1d6. On a one, um, that model's unit suffers one mortal wound. Wait. Once per battle, at the start of your opponent's turn, you can choose to activate this relic. If you do, until the end of that turn, when a model starts or ends a move within uh, within six inches of a model with this relic, roll 1d6 on a one that model's unit suffers one mortal wound. So that's pretty cool. Popping off mortal wounds if you want to be aggressive with your guy there. So um, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. I think I, I think the top one is probably the one I like best, although the second one is pretty cool too. And then you got Warlord traits here. Uh, blooded through war. When a morale test is taken for a friendly Farsight Enclave's unit uh, with the Bonding Knife Ritual ability whilst within 12 inches of this Warlord is automatically passed on a roll of a 4 plus instead of a 6. So, if you don't want to run it away, that's pretty awesome. Within 12 inches, woo, that's real good. Uh, aggressive Tactician, uh, Commander model, unit, uh, model only. When this Warlord declares Monka, it affects uh, friendly Farsight Enclave's units within 12 inches of this Warlord instead of within 6. So, pretty cool. Increasing the uh, Monka ability there. And then uh, when resolving, and then Master of the Killing Blow, uh, when resolving an attack made by this Warlord against a character unit, you can reroll hit rolls. So reroll hit rolls against characters, which is pretty cool. Um, and then they've got their tactical objectives too. They've got some specific tactical objectives, which is pretty fun to just really make it like a fully fleshed out, like another basically uh, force that you could use there. Now let's move on to the Astra Militarum, the Imperial Guard, getting some new special rules in this edition as well, which is pretty great. Um, so we're going to have a couple different things that they've got going on here. So we've got our Astra Militarum name generator. Um, I think I would be, uh, let's see, who would I be? Would I be Cadian, Catachin, Valhallen, or Vastroyan? Uh, I'm going to go with Valhallen just because of the glacial geek here. And I will be Dorf. <laughs> I like that. Uh, regimental doctrines. So this is the same thing as the Tau set set tenets. Uh, same thing as uh, the chapter abilities that you have. This allows you to create your very own regimental doctrines, which is pretty awesome. Uh, combining two uh, powers together to make uh, whatever you want to do, which is pretty awesome for. Uh, I mean, it's it's worked really super well for the Space Marines, and I think it's going to be super good for these guys too. So let's start off. The first one we have here is Gunnery Experts. Uh, and again, you choose two. So Gunnery Experts. When you roll to determine the type characteristic of any weapon a vehicle model with this doctrine is equipped with, you can re-roll one of the dice. So basically giving you um, the ability from the Catachans, except you don't get the plus uh, one to strength. You But you can... But if you're running like a, a vehicle heavy list, and I mean my list that I brought to LVO, I brought them as Catachans so that I could re-roll that uh, that roll for my um, for my wyvern that I had in my list. And essentially my guard units were never really looking to get in close combat, so I wasn't really caring about the plus one strength. It came in handy a couple times, like maybe once or twice, uh, but otherwise I basically brought that I just was Catachan because of basically gunnery experts. So now I could use gunnery experts and then choose something else to, to help me with everything else, which is really great. Uh, then you've got spotter details. Add six inches to the range characteristic of heavy weapons uh, with a range of at least 24 inches. That model with this doctor and are equipped with. So that would work really well with that. So if you've got basilisks in the background, or they've they got really long range. So maybe like even just like the uh, like wyverns if you've got them there. So now you've got the re-roll, the, the, the roll of the dice, and then you can... Uh, have the plus six inches, which is pretty good. Then you've got Disciplined Shooters. Uh, when an infantry model with this Doctrine shoots with a rapid-fire weapon against a unit that is within 18 inches, double the number of attacks that weapon makes rather than following the normal rules for rapid-fire weapons. So basically making rapid-fire at 18 inches instead of half. So 
you've got a 20 so say you have a plasma gun um instead of having to get it 12 inches at 18 inches you've now got double um which i think was oh, one of them destroying maybe destroy and have that ability uh where it increases the range or that increases the range of the weapon in general or no no it does it increases the double the double tap so yeah this is basically the destroying ability there which is pretty cool um fire from the hip infantry models with this doctrine can shoot rapid fire weapons they are equipped with uh even if they advanced uh but when resolving an attack subtract one from the hit rolls so that's pretty cool i wouldn't suggest doing it with uh plasma but if you really want to be super mobile and run them up there you get to do that which is pretty cool um and then you've got um Combined Auspects, when resolving an Overwatch attack made by a Regiment Vehicle model uh, with this Doctrine, whilst within three inches of another friendly Regiment Vehicle unit, a hit roll of five plus scores a hit. So basically you have the um, uh, that, that stratagem for free, as long as you've got multiple units next to each other. So if they're all on their lonesome, they don't get it, but five plus to hit, uh, five plus Overwatch for vehicles, which is pretty cool. Uh, combined Auspects there. Then you've got Agile Warriors. When an infantry unit with this doctrine advances, you can reroll the advance roll. Pretty good. Always fun, especially if you want to use them uh, like with uh, move, move, move. Uh, just get them where you need them to, and you don't have to suffer that where it's like, I rolled a one for that advance, I needed it higher. Well, you get to reroll it. Pretty good. Pyromaniacs, when resolving an attack made with a flamer, heavy flamer, or twin heavy flamer with a model of, by a model with this doctrine, you can reroll a wound roll of one. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you go flamer heavy. Um, then you've got uh, Wilderness Survivors. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against an infantry unit with this Doctrine, if the unit did not advance in its previous movement phase, it is treated as receiving the benefit of cover to its saving throw. So that's cool. cool. Always having cover as long as you don't advance. Um, that can be super helpful keeping your guard alive because Lord knows they need the help. There's not, a, there's not a whole lot keeping them around. Then you've got Jury Rig Repairs. Start of your turn, roll 1d6 for each vehicle model from your army. With the Doctrine that has lost any wounds. On a 2 through 4, the model regains 1 lost wound. On a 5 plus, the model regains up to D3 lost wounds. So that's pretty cool. Uh, just auto repairing all your vehicles. So if your opponent doesn't like focus down your models, they can get you can get them back, which is pretty cool. Lord's Approval. When resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a regiment infantry model with this Doctrine, whilst within 9 inches of a friendly regiment officer model, improve the armor penetration characteristics of the weapon by 1 for the attack pretty good although i don't know maybe maybe pretty good um i don't know are ogren or uh bulgren which one's the close combat one are they considered are they infantry they might be if they are infantry maybe that makes sense but most times you're not really wanting to run your guard into close combat it's not really not really their strongest suit then you got monster hunters when resolving an attack made with a heavy weapon by a model with this doctrine against a monster unit an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage. That's super fun. I like that one a lot. Heavy weapons against monsters. So against Tau, for instance, all their big, their big battle suits, you're going to be doing uh, mortal wounds on sixes, which is pretty cool. Then you got Slum Fighters. We're resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by an infantry model from this doctrine. An unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. So double hits on sixes uh, in close combat. So they've got a fair amount of stuff here for close combat. Um, I, I mean, I guess this is the same thing as the Katachan, where it's like they get a four, uh, strength of four, uh, where they normally would have three. So they were thinking about close combat for that too. That's really where it affects it there. So yeah, keep it, keep it, keep it diverse there, which is pretty fun. I think there's some pretty cool stuff you can pile up or a lot of these things here with this. It's pretty fun there. And then we've got tank aces. If an extra military character is your warlord, rather than determine a warlord trait for that model, you can instead select one tank ace ability for an extra military vehicle model from your army. To, uh, army. Uh, to do so, before the battle begins, select one extra military vehicle model without the Brood Brothers keyword. So it um, basically you can't use tank aces if you're taking these guys uh, allied in with GSC because they all become Brood Brothers from your army and select a tank ace ability from the corresponding list below. Note that some vehicle models cannot be given tank ace abilities. Uh, that tank ace ability applies to the selected model uh, model until the end of the battle. Write down any tank ace abilities your models have in your army roster. Named characters cannot be given a tank ace ability. And no model can have more than one tank ace ability. Uh, if you have an Astro Militarum character model in your army, uh, you can also you also have access to the tank ace stratagem below. 
So basically, it allows you to, if you want to give them a Warlord trait, but then you also want to have a tank ace ability for one CP, you get to give somebody a um, a tank ace ability. Uh, you can only use this stratagem once per battle. So you can actually do two tank ace abilities if you want, uh, because you can have one instead of the uh, instead of the Warlord trait, and then you can spend one CP for that. So you can have up to two. So you've got mainline tank aces. When selected vehicle model has the Lehman Rust keyword, select from the following uh, tank ace abilities. You've got Master Mechanic. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon against this unit, reduce the damage characteristic of that weapon by one to a minimum of one for that attack. That's super effective. The number of times my Gene Stealer Colt uh, aberrants have stuck around a lot longer than they should have is because of that. Especially with there's a lot of weapons out there with damage two, especially the ones that are now coming out that are designed to basically pop Primaris. Now all of a sudden they're only doing damage one to you. I mean, that's half as much damage right there. That's pretty great. I like that one a lot. Uh, then you got slow and purposeful in your shooting phase when resolving an attack made uh, by this model. If it did not move or move distance less than half of its move characteristic in the preceding movement phase, reroll a wound roll of one. So you're rerolling ones to wound, and um, if you if you move half. So basically, if you're gunning for um, if you're already gunning for grinding advance, suddenly now you've got rerolling wounds rolls of one, which is pretty great. So then, if you give it the tank order hit rolls of one. Now you're really in hit rolls of one and wound rolls of one uh, for that model, which is pretty great. Weapons expert. Prove the armor penetration characteristic of turret weapons. Uh, this model is equipped with by one. It's always fun to have that. Uh, armored rush. If you're uh, in your shooting phase, this model can shoot with turret weapons. It is equipped with even if it advanced this turn. So that's pretty cool if you're trying to get up, uh, up the field really quick. Uh, up armored. This model has a save characteristic of two plus. Pretty fun. Uh, so toughness eight, two plus armor save. I like that. Uh, Steel commander, uh, tank commander models with this ability can issue one additional tank order each turn. Huh. Oh, no named character. So if you just have a regular tank commander, you can give him plus one tank order, which is pretty fun. Then you have support aces. Uh, this is for basilisk, wyvern, hydra, manticore, or death strike. You've got full payload. Uh, do not roll to determine the damage characteristic of weapons this model is equipped with. They have their maximum value. Ooh, that's pretty fun. So all of a sudden now those D3 damages are three damages. Those D6 damages are six damage. I like that. I like that one a lot. Um, they can do a lot of a lot of really good stuff there with those with some bas basilisks and whatnot. That's pretty good. Shatter of, uh, Shatterer of Will. In the shooting phase, after you have resolved all of the attacks made by this model, select one enemy unit that uh, any of those attacks score to hit against. Till the end of the turn, subtract two from the leadership characteristics of the unit. I mean, that's okay. Uh, I guess if you're going against hordes, you could really use that to really try to really stick it to like uh, orcs or something like that. That extra minus two can make a difference. And then you got well-stocked magazines. When rolling to determine the type characteristic of a ranged weapon this model is equipped with, you can reroll any or all of the dice. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, put that onto a onto a wyvern because uh, even with the ability to reroll one of the dice, you've got four that you're rolling there. So if you rolled three ones. You get to reroll all three of them as opposed to only being able to reroll one of them. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Well stocked uh, magazines. Then you got super heavy aces. This is for Titanic ones, so a whole bunch of your Bane Blades. Uh, I've got Inspiring Might. When a morale test is taken for a friendly Astro Militarum unit within six inches of this model, roll uh, one additional D6 and discard one of the dice. So that's pretty cool. Getting an additional D6 and discard the highest when you're taking morale. Uh, then you've got hold down deployment. Model receives the benefit of cover until the first time it moves in the battle. So if you just want to lock it down in your deployment zone and you don't plan on moving it, suddenly now it's going to get the benefit of cover, which is, I mean, plus one to saves is nothing to, to be shy about. Then you got steadfast Leviathan. If your army is battleforged, this model gains the regimental doctrine of its regiment, even if it is in a super heavy auxiliary detachment. So that's kind of cool. So if you took it with, um, say, Katachan or you took it with the... Uh, with the regimental doctrine that we talked about, the ability to reroll uh, the die there, you get the ability to to have him use it. So if you had a bane blade and you want to use that, that's pretty cool. I like these. I like these. I think these are fun. I think it's really cool. I think it adds something to be able to have like a, a, a tank heavy uh, Astro Militar force. So let's go over the stratagems that they've got going on here. So the first one we got here is one CP Relentless. Use the stratagem at the start of your turn. Select one vehicle model, except a Titanic model. Uh, that has a damage table uh, on its data sheet. Until the end of that turn, that model uses the top row of its damage table, regardless of how many wounds it has lost. Whew, that's pretty good. 
I like that one a lot. Um, then we've got 1CP for Direct Onslaught. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a Manticore or Wyvern model from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a Storm Eagle Rocket or Wyvern Quad Storm Shard Martyr uh, by that model against a unit that is visible to it, add one to the hit rolls. So that's pretty fun, hitting on threes instead of fours. I like that one a lot. I think that's going to be super good. Then you've got Experienced Eye. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when an Astro Militarum Veterans unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Till the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a weapon by a model in that unit, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that weapon by one for that attack. So plus one uh, AP uh, when you're shooting. That's pretty good. So I like that one for one CP. Uh, one CP, Furious Charge. Use the stratagem in your charge phase when an Ogryn unit from your army finishes a charge move. For each model in that unit, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of that model and roll 1d6 on a 4 plus the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Always fun. You know, I always used to love the, uh, uh, oh, what was it? I just had it. Um, uh, uh, Hammer of Wrath ability there. I like that ability. 1 CP for splash damage. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when a Hellhound model from your army is chosen to shoot with. Till the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a Chem Cannon, Inferno Cannon, or Melta Cannon by that model against a unit that is receiving the benefit of cover, you can reroll the wound roll. So that's pretty cool. It's like it basically means that you shoot it into like their into their bunker and it just splashes off the walls back onto them. Uh, pretty brutal. Uh, then you've got one CP for concentrated fire. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a heavy weapon squad uh, unit from your army is uh, chosen to shoot with. Select one enemy unit until the end of that phase. Attacks made by models in that heavy weapon squad unit must target that enemy unit. When resolving those attacks, add one to the hit and wound rolls for any attacks made with a weapon from the heavy weapons list. So that's pretty fun. I like that one a lot. Um, for one CP, pretty good. I would. I, I think that'd be fun if you have a last cannon squad. You use that to take down an enemy vehicle. You've got some mortar squad. You can use that to take down, like clear out some enemy chaff. I like that one a lot. Then we've got strike first, strike hard. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase. In the first battle round, when an armored sentinel or scout unit from your army is chosen to shoot with, use the stratagem in your shooting phase in the first battle round. Uh, until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, add two to the hit roll. So that's pretty fun. I like that one a lot. Then you've got Shield of Flesh. Use the stratagem in the shooting phase when an infantry unit from your army that is within three inches of a friendly Bulgrins unit is chosen as the target of an attack. Till the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made against that infantry unit, if the Bulgrins unit is closer to the attacking model than the infantry unit is, subtract one from the hit roll. So, minus one to hit uh, if you've got Bulgrins. So they're not taking the hits, they're just basically distracting it, keeping it from the shots from getting where they need to. Uh, so you're minus one to hit, which is pretty good for one CP. Two CP, Hail of Fire. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a Lehman Rust model from your army is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a weapon uh, by that model against a vehicle unit, do not roll to determine the type characteristics of that weapon. It has the maximum value. E, uh, E.g. a heavy D6 weapon makes six shots. Oof. For two CP, that's not bad at all. I like that one a lot. And you've got rolling death. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a Torox model from your army is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by that model... If that model uh, moved less than half its move characteristic in the preceding movement phase, add one to the hit roll. That's pretty cool. And then you've got uh, head first. Use the stratagem in your charge phase when a unit from your army is chosen to charge with. To the end of that phase, if that unit disembarked from a chimera uh, unit this turn, when making a charge roll, the unit can add two to the result. So plus two to charges coming out of chimeras. Pretty good there. Uh, then you've got Focus Bombardment. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a Master of Ordnance unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. To end of that phase, the artillery barrage that unit is equipped with has a type characteristic of Heavy 6. Oof, pretty good. And then uh, Deft Maneuvering. Uh, use the stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase when an Armored Sentinels unit from your army is chosen as the target of for an attack. To end of that phase, when resolving an attack made against that unit, have any damage inflicted rounding up. So basically the same... Uh, the same uh, power that they have for uh, Dreadnoughts with the Space Marines, they now have here for the Astro Militarum with Armored Sentinels. Pretty cool. And 1CP for Psychic Conclave. Use the stratagem at the start of your Psychic phase. 
Select one Weird Vein Psychers unit from your army and one friendly Astra Militarum Primaris Psyker unit within six inches of that Weird Vein Psychers unit. To the end of that phase, when a Psychic test is taken for a model in either of those units, add two to the result. In addition, until the end of that phase, each of those units can attempt to manifest one additional Psychic power. Pretty cool. Now we are into the Ordo Tempestus. Essentially, now this is going to make uh, running uh, your uh, Tempestus Scions, Militarum Tempestus, on their own a lot better, essentially. Uh, making them running their own thing is a lot better. So, um, Militarum Temp uh, Tempestus Regiment. Militarum Tempestus units in your army gain the Tempestus Regiment keyword. Uh, when you include a unit with a Tempestus Regiment keyword in your army, you must nominate which Tempestus Regiment it is from. And then replace all instances of the Tempestus Regiment keyword uh, in your unit's data sheet with the, uh, with the name of your chosen Tempestus Regiment. The Tempestus Regiment keywords can be uh, can only be replaced by one of the following. And we'll get into which ones they are over here in a bit. If your army contains any units with both the Regiment and Tempestus Regiment keywords, you must choose a different keyword to replace each of those keywords on those units' data sheets. Regimental Doctrines. If your army is battleforged, all Tempestus Regiment units in a Militarum Tempestus Detachment gain a Regimental Doctrine selected from those presented on the page opposite. So long as every unit in that detachment, excluding the Advisors and Auxiliary mentioned below, as, uh, has the same Tempestus Regiment keyword. Advisors and Auxilla. Uh, the, the, basically the same thing that doesn't stop um, you from getting the Regimental Doctrines. It doesn't stop you from getting the Tempestus, Militarum Tempestus uh, doctrines. So let's go over the regimental doctrines here. So the first one we have here is for Death from the Dark. This is the 54th uh, Cyan Jackals. Each model destroyed by an attack made by a model with this doctrine in your shooting phase is treated as two destroyed models in the following morale phase. That's pretty good if you're going up against, um, against orcs or something like that. So now every orc counts as two. I mean, I like that one a lot. Then we've got Predatory Strike, 32nd uh, Thetoid Eagles. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model with this doctrine against a unit that is within half range, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. So exploding sixes, um, which is pretty good, again, in, in half range. So I like that. Then you've got Prize Weaponry, the 100, uh, 133rd Lambden Lions. Improve the armor penetration characteristic of weapons models with this doctrine are equipped with by one. So plus one AP on all your weapons. All weapons. Pretty good. I like that one. It's like having the doctrines except everything. <laughs> uh, then you've got Crack Shots, 43rd Iodin uh, Dragons. Uh, dragons? Dragons? Dragons. Dragons. I add, I, uh, Iodin Dragons. Uh, add six inches to the range characteristic of rapid fire weapons models with this doctrine are equipped with. That's pretty good. So now all of a sudden you got 30 inch plasma guns. Um, you've got, uh, what is that? The, uh, isn't the hot shot las guns also uh, rapid fire, I believe. So suddenly now those, those guys are going to be, what, 24 inches? That's pretty good. That plus six inches makes a big difference there. Uh, I like that one a lot. Then you've got mobilized infantry, the 55th Capic uh, Eagles. Infantry models with this doctrine do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. When resolving an attack made by a model with this doctrine in a turn in which it disembarked from a transport, add one to the hit rolls. That's pretty good. And then Resolute uh, Heroism, the 9th Iodin uh, Gorgon, the Gorgons, 9th Iodin Gorgons. Uh, when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by an infantry model with this doctrine against the closest enemy unit, unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. So instead of just being at half range, uh, as long as they're the closest enemy model, uh, enemy unit you score um, you have exploding sixes so I like those I like I think they're pretty cool uh, really makes it a benefit for for taking these guys then we've got heirlooms of the regiments if your army is led by a war uh, led by a warlord in a military tempestus detachment you can give one of the following relics to a character model in a military tempestus detachment from your army instead of giving them a relic from codex astro militarum note that some relics are weapons that replace blah 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 all the usual stuff so the Hound's, tooth, uh, Hound's Teeth, 54th Cyan Jackals model equipped with a chainsword only. This relic replaces a chainsword and has the following profile. Strength plus one, AP minus two, two damage. Uh, when this bear fights, it makes three additional attacks with this weapon. When resolving an attack made with this weapon against an Eldari unit, it can reroll the wound rolls. Pretty cool. I like that one a lot. Um, 
I don't know if it's better than some of the other relics you can take, but not bad. I like it. And then you got Fire of Judgment. This is against the. This is for the thirty second Theodid Eagles uh, model equipped with a Hotshot Last Pistol only. It replaces the Hotshot Last Pistol with the following: Range twelve, Pistol two, Strength three, AP dash, and Damage dash. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon, a successful hit roll inflicts um, one mortal wound on the target, and the attack sequence ends. I wonder why they gave a strength then for it. When resolving an attack made with this weapon, a successful hit, because all you need to do is hit, and then you're doing mortal wounds. That's pretty cool. I like that one a lot. That's a certain upgrade, definitely an upgrade for a uh, hotshot last pistol there. Then you got Refractor Field Generator. This is the 133rd Lambda Lions model only. Friendly 133rd Lambda Lions models have a 5 plus invulnerable save whilst within 6 inches of a model from your army with this relic. So, 5 plus invul save to models within 6 inches of that. Pretty good. I always like bubble stuff like that. I like running Azrael with his 4 plus. Um, but, you know, this is this is pretty good. 5 plus invul save is always nice to have. Especially with all the increased AP that you've got out there with uh, Space Marines and their Doctrines. Then you've got the 43rd Iotan Dragons. Uh, model equipped with a plasma pistol only. This relic replaces the plasma pistol, um, and basically it's pistol three, the same profiles as usual plasma, and um, it destroys them if uh, if they supercharge it. But it becomes pistol three instead of pistol one, which is pretty good. And then you got distraction charges, 55th Capic Eagles model only, resolving an Overwatch attack made by a friendly 55th Capic Eagles model within three inches of uh, when resolving an Overwatch attack by. A, made by a friendly model within three inches of a model with this relic um, if the attack scores a hit the target is slowed until the end of the phase when a charge roll is made for a slowed unit have the result so you can half the charges against them so if you're not looking to get in combat you can do that which is pretty cool and then you got blessed bolt gun uh, ninth iotan gorgons uh, model equipped with the bolt gun replaces it uh, range 12 inches rapid fire one strength five ap minus two uh, two damage with a bolt gun becomes 12 inch range uh, this weapon can target a character unit even if it's not the closest enemy unit when resolving an attack made with this weapon against a psyker unit this weapon has a damage characteristic of three for the attack so that's not bad strength two ap minus uh, strength five ap minus two two damage rapid fire one so at six inches you're gonna get two shots i mean i wonder why they dropped it oh, i guess it would be really it would be kind of brutal against psychers if you had it at 24 inches but still not bad. That's certainly worth checking out there. And then we got some Warlord traits for these Militarum Tempestus dude bros. Uh, we've got the Jackals here at the start of the first battle round. Before the first turn begins, select up to three Jackals units from your army on the battlefield. Remove those units from the battlefield and set them up again as described in the deployment section of the mission being played. If both players have the ability, then you uh, roll off. The winner chooses who redeploys their units first. So that's pretty cool. Then you got Uncompromising Prosecution, uh, 32nd Theod Eagles. When resolving an attack made with a Hotshot Laz Gun, Hotshot Laz Pistol, or Hotshot Volley Gun by a friendly uh, Eagles model that it, whilst within 6 inches of this Warlord, uh, on an unmodified wound roll of 6, that weapon has an armor penetration characteristic of minus 4 for the attack. Woo! That's pretty good. I like that one. Although you'd have to really castle up to get them within 6 inches, but still, if you're going to be doing it, that's not bad. And then you've got the uh, for the Lambdon Lions, keys of, to the armory. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made with ranged weapons by models in friendly Lions units whilst their unit is within six inches of this Warlord. So reroll and hit rolls of one, um, which is always a good thing to have. And it's units within six inches, so it gives you a little bit more space to have everything running there. And then you've got the, uh, the Dragoons, or the Dragons, uh, precision targeting. At the start of your shooting phase, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of this Warlord. To the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by a friendly uh, dragon's model, whilst its unit is within uh, six inches of this warlord, uh, that enemy unit does not receive the benefit of cover. So ignore cover to one unit within 18 inches. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, you have to be pretty close for it to really become uh, effective. I think I like the reroll uh, hit rolls of one with, for units within six inches better than that. And then you've got the Eagles here. When resolving this Warlord's Voice of Command ability, it can issue orders to friendly uh, Eagles infantry units within 24 inches. In addition, while this Warlord is embarked with any transport model, it can still use this Voice of Command ability. When doing so, make any measurements for that uh, from that transport model's hull. So that's pretty cool. I like that one. 
Um, and then you've got Sanctity of Spirit for the Gorgons. Uh, when a Psychic Test is taken for an enemy Psyker model within 24 inches of this Warlord, that model suffers Perils of the Warp uh, on a roll of any double. So, popping off, that's pretty cool. I like that one. That's always fun if you can make your opponent suffer Perils of the Warp more. Then we've got Specific Militarum Tempestus Stratagems. So for 1 CP, you have Point Blank Efficacy. I uh, use the strategy in your shooting phase when a military tempestus unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a hotshot las gun, hotshot las pistol, or hotshot volley gun by a model in this unit against a unit within uh, against a unit uh, ugh, by a model in that unit against a unit within half range, add one to the strength characters of that weapon in the attack. So that's kind of cool. Plus one strength for one CP in half range. I like it. Uh, then we've got uh, one CP for unquestioning obedience. Use a stratagem in the morale phase. Uh, select one Tempestus Prime or Commissar model from your uh, army. To the end of the phase, when a morale test is taken for a friendly metal term Tempest unit within 12 inches of that model, do not roll the dice. It is automatically passed. So uh, if you have multiple units that you want to auto pass uh, for one CP, so even if it's just one unit, for one CP you can auto pass a morale test. And for 1 CP, it's any of them within Tempestus Prime and the Commissar. So if you have like three units that have to take morale tests, they all pass, which is pretty cool if they're within that range. So not bad for 1 CP. I like that one a lot. Um, I think that one's going to get used a fair amount if you've got if you're running these Tempestus. Then you've got Precision Drop. Use uh, 1 CP. Use the strategy in your movement phase. Select one Aeronautic Imperialis model with the Flyer Battlefield roll and the Grav Shoot Insertion ability from your army. Until the end of that phase, when a military Tempestus unit with the aerial drop ability embarked aboard the mod, uh, the mod, uh, embarked aboard that model disembarks, that unit must be set up more than five inches away from any enemy models instead of more than nine inches. In addition, if that model moved more than twenty inches that phase, do not roll d6 for each model disembarking. No models are destroyed. So that's pretty cool uh, for one CP. You're not taking dangerous terrain tests for dropping out of there if it's moved, shot up the board. And it also gives you the ability to drop five inches away. So if you want to get rapid fire with your, uh, um, or if you want to get within melter range with your, with like a squad with melter guns, that could be super effective. I think that'd be fun. Or if you have any of the other things that give you uh, special benefits for being within half range, suddenly now you can proc it there with your, uh, with a lot, with a lot more of your weapons, which is pretty cool because five inches you got 12 inch range weapons are not going to be able to do it which is pretty cool or even just the regular uh hotshot las guns they're 18 inch range so you would have to drop outside of nine inches you wouldn't be within half range but now you would with the five inches so i like that one a lot then you got two cp for hammer blow use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a model uh is destroyed by an attack made by an aeronautic imperialis model with this flyer battlefield rule from your army that destroyed model's unit is pinned until the start of the next turn have the result of any advance and charge rolls made for pinned units. When resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by a model from a pinned unit, subtract one from the hit roll. So pretty good there. Then you've got advanced countermeasures for 1 CP. Use the strategy before the battle. Select one Valkyrie model from your army. When you declare that model will hover, it does not lose the hard to hit ability. That's super cool. I like that one a lot. Uh, so you basically have, um, you still get hard to hit even if you drop into hover mode, which is, which is super, super awesome. Because that's always one of, the, one of the hard things where you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out whether you should drop into hover mode with your flyer is, like, how is this going to hurt me? Am I going to be shot at now because it's not hard to hit? Not, not the minus one. But now he gets to retain that, which is super awesome. I like that one a lot. I think that would get used a lot too. Uh, and then you've got uh, one CP for tactical air control. Use the strategy at the start of your shooting phase. Select one officer of the fleet model from your army. To enter that phase, when picking an enemy unit for that model's air raid requested or strafing coordinates abilities, you can measure the range and visibility from any, any friendly military tempestus unit on the battlefield that has a Voxcaster instead of from that model. We're rolling a D6 for that model's air raid requested ability. Add two to the roll. So that's pretty fun. I like that one. Uh, then you've got one CP for Progeny of Conflict. Use the strategy before the battle after nominating your warlord. Select one Astro Militarum -Arm character model from your army that does not have a warlord trait. And then you get to give him one. So you get to have an additional warlord trait, which is pretty fun. Then you have one CP for killing zone. Use the strategy in your shooting phase after you have shot with a Tempestus Regiment infantry unit from your army. 
Select one enemy unit that has uh, that had any models destroyed as a result of the attacks made by models from that unit in that phase. To end that phase, when resolving an attack made by a friendly Tempestus infantry uh, model against the enemy unit, add one to the wound roll. So plus one to wound, which is pretty good. Uh, if, so you could drop in some, um, you know, or you can get some lucky, maybe you get some lucky shots with some hotshot las guns. And then if you do that wound, you can pop that and then use your uh, plasma guys. Or you can get, um, add one to the wound roll. You can drop in with some plasma, get some... Uh, you know, kill a few of the like some tough, um, some tough infantry there, and then pop it, and then shoot the rest of them with your hotshot las guns, and you're gonna get plus one to the wound roll, which is pretty nice. Tactical misdirection: use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a unit that is destroyed by an attack made by a model in a Capic Eagles unit from your army in your opponent's next shooting phase when resolving an attack made by an enemy model against a unit other than that Capic Eagles unit, subtract one from the hit roll. That Capic Eagles unit is the closest visible unit from your army to that model. So wait, use the strategy in your shooting phase. In your shooting phase, when a unit is destroyed by an attack made by a model in a 55th Capic Eagles unit from your army. In your opponent's next shooting phase, when resolving an attack made by an enemy model against a unit other than that Capic Eagles unit, subtract one from the hit roll if that Capic Eagles unit is the closest visible unit uh, from your army to that model. Oh, okay. So that's pretty cool. You can protect the rest of your army. So if you have those ones drop in, um, they destroy uh, destroy a unit, and suddenly now you pop that, and then they can, they're the ones that are going to have to sh- uh, they're going to have to shoot at you. So if you've got them in cover there, you can you know try to keep them alive better, and it helps protect against other units that might be um, that might be you know more prime targets for them to shoot at. So that's pretty cool. Um, then you've got Drilled to Perfection. This is specific to the Dragons. Uh, use the strategy in your opponent's charge phase uh, before a 43rd Iodin Dragons unit from your army fires Overwatch. At the end of that phase, when resolving an Overwatch attack made by a model net unit, hit roll of 4 plus scores a hit. Woo! That's pretty good. I like that one a lot. 4 plus to hit in Overwatch? I'd take that. Then you've got uh, 1 CP for Elusive Hunters. This is for the Jackals. Use the strategy in your opponent's shooting phase when a 54th uh, Jack, uh, Cyan Jackals unit from your army is chosen as the target for an attack. Until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made with a ranged weapon by an enemy model against that unit, whilst that unit is not within half range, subtract one from the hit roll. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, minus one to hit against that unit uh, if they're not within half range. So if your opponent is shooting at them from long distance... You pop it 1 CP, and now they're minus 1 to hit, which is pretty cool. Uh, 1 CP, Gifts from the Mechanicus. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when a 133rd Lambdon Lions unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a Hotshot las gun, Hotshot las Pistol, or Hotshot Volley Gun by a model in that unit, an unmodified wound roll of 6 inflicts one mortal wound on the target, and the attack sequence ends. So basically it just allows you to uh, do mortal wounds on 6s to wound, which is pretty good. Uh, so they can't make any saves against them, which is which is nice for one CP. Uh, a little bit risky, obviously, because you need sixes to wound. So you have to hit and then wound with sixes for that to be anything, and you have to do the one CP in your shooting phase um, when they're chosen to shoot with. So then the one CP for full charge. Use the strategy in your shooting phase when a uh, Eagle's Torox Prime model from your army is chosen to shoot with until the end of the phase when resolving an attack made with a mo- uh, by that model. Against an enemy unit within 12 inches, you can re-roll the hit roll. So re-roll hit rolls for Torox Prime from the Theodid Eagles. Not bad. And then Daring Descent. Use the strategy in your movement phase. Select one ninth Iodin Gorgons unit from your army that is set up in a high altitude transport. To the end of that phase, when you are set up, uh, when you set up that unit on the battlefield using the aerial drop ability, that unit must be set up more than five inches away from any enemy models instead of more than nine inches away. You cannot, you cannot charge that uh, charge with that unit this turn. So again, that's really good at getting you in within half range to shoot with your weapons to get the benefits uh, for your stuff that you can get earlier. It also allows you to get down there with melted guns, a, like a squad of um, like a Tempestus command squad with with four melted guns. You drop them down five inches away, and suddenly they're in melter range with those melted guns, which is pretty great. I like that one. I'm in for one CP, not bad at all. And now we get into so anyway, before I go into this, I like this a lot. I think it's really cool. I like any time that you get to use another uh, force here. The Tempestus kind of felt like, 
they're fun, they're cool, um, and I always I like them a lot. And I've got a bunch that I'm building and uh, painting, and I think it's kind of fun to be able to use them as a sole force uh, now and getting benefits to them as opposed to just kind of being seeming like a little bit of an afterthought. You know, like a cool like a bit of uh, a little ump that you could add to a regular regiment, or now they can be their own thing and be kind of an elite uh, squad, which is pretty fun. So now let's go into the Gene Stealer cult section of this book. Um, they've got a lot of really fun stuff here. Uh, the Lurkers Beneath. So so basically they've got a bit of an errata to the different stuff here. So kind of going over the different um, the rules that they changed uh, through throughout these things. Um and they've got some uh, some changes to uh, cult ambush. Basically, uh, counting them as on the table here. Match play, uh, set up an ambush. Count as being set up on the battlefield for the purposes of tactical reserves. And revealing ambush markers. All of that different stuff that they've got going on here. Uh, then we go into cult creeds, stratagems, psychic powers, and the name generator. Um, so, uh, so basically, yeah, infantry and bike... Uh, uh, during deployment, you can set up this unit in ambush instead of on the battlefield. Uh, if this unit uh, has the infantry or biker keyword, you can either set it up in ambush or underground instead of on the battlefield. When set up a unit underground, it can merge at any time there. Um, the movement phase, more than nine inches away, so deep striking there. When you set up an ambush, uh, place one ambush marker anywhere on the battlefield that is wholly within your deployment zone. Um, then uh, if you set up a transport model, you only place the one. Ambush markers are not units and cannot be targeted, attacked, or destroyed. When measuring to or from ambush markers, always measure to the center of the marker. If you are deploying, uh, if you are playing a mission that uses concealed deployment, uh, the concealed deployment rules only apply to units that do not have the cult ambush ability. If you are playing a mission that uses sentries, sentry models cannot be set up in ambush even if they have the cult ambush ability. So let's go over specific things that you can, that, that have probably come up with specific missions here. Then match play, uh, um, units set up in ambush uh, using this rule, count as being set up in the battlefield for the purposes of tactical reserves. Then you have revealing ambush markers. If you uh, have the first turn, you must reveal all of your ambush markers at the start of the movement phase, uh, one at a time before moving on, uh, moving any units. Each time you reveal an ambush marker, select one unit from your army that you set up in ambush. Then set up one model from a unit within one inch of that ambush marker. Then remove that marker before uh, setting up the rest of the model's units wholly within nine, six inches of that first model, wholly within your deployment zone, and more than nine inches from any enemy models. Any, uh, any models that cannot be placed are destroyed. If it's your turn, uh, that unit can still move and shoot normally during the turn it is set up, but if, uh, but if it is a transport, units that disembark from it uh, this turn cannot be set up within nine inches of any enemy models. Note that unless this, uh, these units actually move during the movement phase, they do not count as having moved in the movement phase for any uh, rules purposes such as shooting heavy weapons. If your opponent has the first turn, then none of their units can be set up or end a move within nine inches of any of your ambush markers. Uh, at the end of your opponent's first movement phase, after they have set up all of their units from reinforcements, if any, Reveal all of your uh, ambush markers as described above before continuing with the turn. Then we've got the Brood Brothers. Several Gene Stealer Colts units also have the Brood Brothers keyword. Uh, these units can be included in a Gene Stealer Colts detachment without preventing other units in that detachment from getting a Colt Creed. Note, however, that Brood Brothers units do not themselves benefit from any Colt Creed. In addition, to represent Astro Militarum forces that have been subverted, to include Astro Militarum units in your Gene Stealer Colts. Uh, and your Gene Stealer Colts units in the same match play army, even though these units do not have a faction keyword in common. In such cases, ignore the Astro Militarum units when choosing your army's faction. If your army is battleforged, you can only include one Astro Militarum um, detachment for each cult, uh, amb uh, for each uh, Gene Stealer Colt detachment. So that's the same. Uh, you cannot include Astro Militarum named characters in these detachments, and these detachments cannot be specialist detachments. These Astro Militarum detachments are then uh, known as Brood Brothers detachments, and every unit of them has the Regiment or Militarum Tempestus keyword, must replace it in every instance on its data sheet with Brood Brothers. Uh, if, it, uh, if a unit does not have uh, either of these keywords, it simply gains the Brood Brothers keywords. Uh, so that prevents a lot of the other stuff where it said, like where the Brood Brothers, if it has a Brood Brothers keyword, you can't use it. Uh, so for instance, the Tank Aces, you can't take like a Tank uh, detachment and give them tank aces. You, you just have it here. 
Brood Brothers attachments do not gain any of the detachment abilities listed in Codex Astro Militarum, such as regimental doctrines, nor can they use any regiment uh, specific stratagems, orders, etc. Furthermore, infantry models in Brood Brothers detachments increase their leadership characteristic by one, and they gain the unquestioning loyalty ability. So that basically allows them to enter. Uh, so even in a full Astro, in a regular Astro Militarum detachment, the um, the oh, what's gonna call it? They can still intercept the the wounds. They can, they can pass off wounds from other uh, from the characters, which is pretty cool. So you can pass it off onto the, the Astro Militarum. Um, units in Brood Brothers detachments do not gain a cult ambush ability. Uh, your warlord cannot be from Brood Brothers detachment, and you cannot give any relics to Brood Brothers characters. In addition, the command benefits for all Brood Brothers detachments included in your army in this way are halved, rounding up. This reflects that such detachments are not a Gene Stealer cult's primary fighting force, and the acquisition of such military assets is costly in terms of resource. Uh, this, the command benefits of auxiliary support detachments are unaffected. Um, so, uh, orders. Brood Brothers units that have the voice of command or tank orders abilities uh, cannot issue orders to any unit that has the Gene Stealer Cult faction keyword, nor can they issue orders to units that they would not otherwise have been able to. So essentially meaning that, like, because that was always the issue where they had it, where they, they FAQ'd it. So basically this stuff just gives all of the, um, just goes with all of the FAQs and brings it all in for the errata so, to answer all those questions. Now let's get into the Cult Creeds. This is more of an interesting portion I think that people are interested in. Uh, going over here, we have uh, this is the same way where you can make your own uh, your own cult, which is pretty cool. And you select two of these rules. So the first one is Hunter's Instinct. To the end of the first battle round, add one to advance and charge rolls made for units in this cult creed. So essentially, like Cult of the Formed Emperor, except you don't get it when they come in from uh, the thing. So it's only that first turn. So it's I mean, it, I guess if you go second, you could possibly get off a charge and that'd be helpful, but uh, less so, I think so now. Then you've got Innate Fighters, uh, resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a model with this cult creed. In a turn in which it made a charge move, was charged, or performed heroic intervention, reroll a hit roll of one. So rerolling ones uh, with melee weapons. That's super fun. I like that one a lot. Innate Fighters. I think that's going to be a good one to use. Then you've got Thralls of the Patriarch, uh, when a morale test is taken for a unit with this cult creed, have the number of models have uh, half the number of models that flee rounding up. So that's pretty cool, not, not running away as much, uh, having the number of models that run away, which is always fun. And then seasoned enforcers. Um, infantry models with this cult creed do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. So if you want to run a bunch of mining lasers with your neophytes, uh, that's pretty cool. They get to move and shoot without uh, suffering the penalty. Then Agile Outriders, bikers models with this uh, cold creed do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons and do not suffer the penalty for advancing and firing assault weapons. So that's pretty fun if you want to run around with a bunch of uh, Adelin Jackals. Then you got Armor Piercing Ammunition. When resolving an attack made with an auto pistol, auto gun, or heavy stubber by a model with this cold creed against a unit that is within half range, that weapon has an armor penetration characteristic of minus one for that attack. So that's probably cool. A uh, half range getting minus one. Especially if you're going with like mass infantry, I think that could be super fun. Good, um, because you have it with auto pistol. So even if you just have the auto pistol, so even if you're charging in and you're you're caught in close combat there, you can have those auto pistols that everyone has is my AP minus one. Not bad. And then you got munitions experts add one to the strength characteristic of grenade weapons models with this cult creator equipped with. Not bad. And then you've got unnatural symbiosis when a psychic test is taken for a cult model. Uh, with this cult creed within six inches of another friendly cult unit, you can reroll any and all dice rolls of one. Ooh, that's super fun. That's super fun. I like that one a lot, Unnatural Symbiosis. And then Workers Arisen. Uh, when resolving an attack made with a weapon from the heavy mining weapons list uh, by a model with this cult creed, you can reroll the hit roll. So rerolling heavy weapons. So that's like the mining lasers and the seismic cannons and those kind of things. That's pretty fun. I like that one a lot. Um... So you get to, with that combined with the uh, not suffering the penalty for, uh, for moving with a heavy weapon, suddenly now, you know, you're always going to be hitting on fours and you get to reroll failed hits. So that's pretty fun. I think that works really well together for that. Because uh, that's a pretty, pretty strong build that people have been looking into. Neophytes like going very DACA heavy uh, with the heavy weapons and the neophyte squads. And you put them in there and now he's moving with those heavy weapons and they're getting to shoot and they're getting to reroll the hits. Not bad. Then you got Devote Worshippers. When a charge roll is made for a cult unit 
with this cult creed whilst within three inches of a friendly cult hybrid metamorphs unit you can re-roll the dice this cult creed cannot be selected together with the hunter's instinct cult creed um Okay, hybrid metamorphs. Are, they're trying to bring them back, which is kind of interesting because a lot of people have not been using them. Um, but now it looks like they've got a, a good reason to. Now you get to re-roll uh, charge rolls, not just for them, but any unit within three inches of them gets to re-roll uh, charge rolls, which is pretty good. And then you have poison blades. Uh, when resolving an attack made with a bone sword, a lash whip and bone sword, or a cultist knife by a model with this cult creed, on an unmodified hit roll, uh, hit roll of six... You can make one additional attack against the same unit using the same weapon. This additional attack cannot can generate additional attacks. So there's some pretty cool stuff there. I like the the fact that you can make like a like a shooty build there. And the Nate Fighters I think is going to be super powerful um, with uh, more aggressive uh, close combat builds that you've got there. You got the ability to run around with your agile outriders. I think there's some really fun, interesting stuff you can go here. Um, I think it's also interesting to see that there's still good reasons to take the regular cults that they have there uh, which I think is an interesting way to look at it um, so for instance if you're only looking for that plus one to the charge and advance uh, perhaps just go cult of the forearmed emperor uh, instead of taking this because uh, it'll go past turn one as long as you're coming in from cold ambush so interesting stuff there I think there's some there's some really uh, some stuff that you can really work with there which is which is good now let's get into the cult stratagems that they've got here. So the first one we have here for 1CP, Prepared Ambush. Use this uh, stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select one Neophyte Hybrids unit from your army that was set up on the battlefield using the Cult Ambush ability in this battle round. Until the end of that phase, Autogun models, auto guns models in that unit are equipped with have a type characteristic of Assault 2. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so you don't have to worry about being in within half range. You just got Assault 2 at full range, which is great. Um, you got 1CP for Annihilating Advance. Use the stratagem in your charge phase when a Goliath Rock Grinder unit from your army finishes a charge move. Select one enemy infantry unit within one inch of that unit and roll 1d6. On a 2+, plus, the enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Woo! That's pretty fun. Um, so you charge in with a Goliath Rock Grinder and boom, popping off the d3 mortal wounds. Uh, then you got 2cp for integrated Voxnet. Uh, use this stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select one, Adelin, uh, one Jackal Alphys model from your army. To the end of that phase... Replace that model's priority target sighted ability with the following. Vox Contact. At the start of your shooting phase, select one enemy unit within 36 inches invisible to this model. Until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack made with a friendly cult model against that unit, whilst the model is within 18 inches of this model, add one to the hit roll. An enemy unit can only be selected with target, uh, as the target's ability uh, target uh, sighted once per phase. So basically extends the... Uh, the, the power of the uh, Jackal Alphys to 18 inches, which is pretty nice. Uh, not just to the bikers too, which is cool. Uh, then you've got uh, Close Range Shootout for 1CP. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when an Adeline Jackals unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. To the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a pistol or assault weapon by a model in the unit against the enemy unit within 12 inches, you can reroll the wound roll. So that's pretty good. Then you've got 1CP for Violence Unleashed. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when a hybrid metamorphs unit from your army is chosen to fight with. So at the end of that phase, add one to the attacks characteristics of the models in that unit. So for one CP, now hybrid metamorphs are going to get uh, an additional attack. They're really trying to bring them back. And I think they're probably, I mean, that between those two abilities, I think that's going to be super, super powerful, which is pretty good. Then for one CP, commanding ampli amplification. Use the stratagem before the battle. Select one Clamavis model from your army. The range of that model's Proclaimer Hailer ability is increased by 3 inches. The same model cannot be selected by this stratagem more than once per battle. So that's pretty good for 1CP. Not bad. 1CP, uh, the Gnarled Fist. Use this stratagem before the battle. Select one Abominant unit from your army. That unit's chosen one ability uh, affects friendly Cult Aberrant units within 9 inches of that unit instead of within 6. You can only use this stratagem once per battle. That's not bad. I like that one. Uh, so now your Aberrants are going to get the ability to... Uh, so even if your uh, abominant fails his charge uh, your, and your aberrants make it, they'll still get the, the benefits for that, which is pretty good. Then you've got Raking Fire. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase. Select one Achilles Ridge Runner unit from your army. Until the end of the turn, when resolving an attack made with a heavy stubber the model in that unit, add one to the hit and wound rolls. So that's not bad. Plus one to hit, plus one to wound uh, with, with, the, uh, with the heavy stubbers. Not bad. I like that one. For one CP. 
Um, then you've got uh, the Cult Psyche. Use this strategy before the battle. Select one Cult Magus unit from your army. That unit can attempt to manifest one additional psychic power in your psychic phase. When a psychic test is taken for that unit, add one to the total for each other friendly uh, Cult Psyker unit within three inches to a maximum of plus three. You can only use this strategy once per battle. Oof. That is going to be like a go-to use for me a lot. I think I'm going to do that one a lot. That's pretty fun. You pop him down there. You give him the ability to pop off uh, both like, um, you know, uh, mass hypnosis and a, and a smite. That's pretty good. I like that one. Uh, slipping through the shadows. Use the strategy in your movement phase. When a Sanctus unit uh, is chosen to move to the end of that phase, when that unit advances, add six to his move characteristic until the end of the phase instead of making an advance roll. In addition, until the end of the turn, that unit can be chosen to charge with even if they advance this turn. That's not bad. I like that one. And then you've got Genetic Lineage. Use the stratagem in the charge phase. Select one Acolyte Hybrids unit uh, from your army. Until the end of the phase, that unit can be chosen to charge with even if it advanced this turn. That's pretty good. Because um, the number of times that you just get stuck back where you are and you want to just get in there. That's pretty fun. I like that one. And then you got 1 CP for evasive driving. Uh, use this strategy in your opponent's shooting phase. Uh, when a, gri a Goliath rock grinder or Goliath truck unit from your army is chosen as the target of an attack made with a ranged weapon. Until the end of that phase, mod uh, weapons with an armor penetration characteristic of minus 1 or minus 2 are treated as having an armor penetration characteristic of 0 when resolving an attack against that unit. That's pretty fun. I like that. Um, ignoring AP minus 1 and AP minus 2 makes a big difference, especially when you're going against uh, Marines that are having all these... Uh, pluses to their AP because of doctrines. And then 1 CP for overcharged weaponry. Uh, use this strategy in your shooting phase when a cult unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. To so the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a clearance incinerator, heavy mining laser, or heavy seismic cannon by a model in that unit, add 1 to the wound roll. Oof! I like that one a lot. Put a clearance incinerator on top of a Goliath rock grinder, run him up there. Um, you use the evasive driving to keep him alive longer. And then you shoot with that. I like that a lot. And then you've got uh, the Heart of the Creed. Use this strategy before the battle. Select one Cult Primus model from your army. When that model is set up in the battlefield for the first time, you can select one additional enemy unit for that model's meticulous planner ability. You can only use this strategy once per battle. That's pretty cool. I like. I always like that, especially when you pop down and there's like two main targets that you want to go after. You can now pop them down for one CP. You can pick both of them, which is pretty good. So some pretty good strategies here. I like these. I like this. I think it's going to help us a lot. Um, it would have been nice to see something to make it easier for us to get into um, combat because that's where we shine as uh, the Gene Stealer cult. I think uh, I think we're still suffering since a lot of things now have the ability to push us out uh, to keep us from getting those close co those uh, those those charges off, and uh, none of these really super help with it, other than allowing us to advance and charge, which. I mean, maybe that's a new strategy that we use. Hide, you know, deep strike them in, hide them, and then advance them up and charge next turn. Make it harder for them to get around because it doesn't, you know, those 12-inch bubbles don't work against advances. They only work against deep strikes. So so maybe just hide them in buildings, drop them into, you know, uh, behind walls and stuff like that to keep line of sight, keep them alive, and then you advance them, move them and advance them, and then charge in with them. Uh, maybe that's the call. Maybe that's the gun. Maybe that's what you try. Uh, it's worth trying out. And see what it is. These are just different ways to try to get around all those different ways that have become hard for the gene stealer cult to really do their thing. And I think some of these uh, stratagems are going to help with that. Like now that I think about it, using that, having that ability, I think is going to be uh, pretty helpful there. Then we got the psychic powers here for the cult. Uh, each of the different uh, main cults got an initial psychic power, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have cult of formed emperors undermine uh, war charge value of eight. If manifest is like one enemy infantry unit within eighteen inches of the psyker. To the start of your uh, next psychic phase, have the movement characteristic of models in that unit and have any advance or charge rolls made for that unit, rounding up. So that's pretty cool. You, you pop that onto like a onto a um, Centurion squad or something like that and suddenly they can't get the charge off, which is always fun. Keeping them out of combat is always good. Then you've got the Hive Cult, Synaptic Blast. Uh, warp charge value of 6. If manifest, it's like one enemy unit within 18 inches of and visible to this Psyker. Roll a number of D6 equal to the number of Hive Cult models from your army within 3 inches of that unit. For each roll of 6, that unit suffers 1 mortal wound. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, within 3 inches of that unit. So if you have your units all get into combat, you pop that in the Psychic phase. I like that a lot. And then you've got the Bladed Cog, Undying Vigor. 
Uh, warp charge value of 6. If manifest is like one bladed cog unit from your army within 12 inches of the psyker to the start of your next psychic phase when a model from that unit would lose a wound, roll a d6, 5 plus feel no pain. Pretty good. I like that one. For a warp charge value of 6, hell yeah. Then you got the rusted claw, inescapable decay. Inescapable decay has a warp charge value of 6. If manifest is select one enemy vehicle unit within 18 inches of and visible to this psyker. Till the end of that turn, um, until the end of the turn when resolving an attack made with a weapon against that unit, improve the armor penetration characteristic of the weapon by one uh, for that attack. So basically you get to point out a unit and be like, kill that guy. <laughs> and it basically takes down their vehicle's, uh, their vehicle's armor, which is pretty cool. And the Pauper Prince's Last Gasp. Uh, last gasp, a gasp has a uh, warp charge value of 7. If manifested, select one Pauper Prince's unit from your army within 12 inches of this Psyker until the start of your next Psychic Phase when a model of this unit is destroyed. Roll 1d6 before removing that model from play. On a 4+, plus, that model can either shoot with one of its ranged weapons as if it were your shooting phase or make one attack with one of its melee weapons as if it was a fight phase. So essentially giving them the banner ability, um, which is pretty cool, onto a unit. Doesn't have to be within range of the of the banner, which is also pretty nice. So you know, you can have them spread off in a line, like along there, and they'll still get the ability as long as this is that one unit. And then you got the twisted helix mutagenic deviation. Uh, mutagenic deviation is a warp charge value of six. If manifested, it's like one enemy infantry unit within twelve inches of the psyker. To the start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made with a melee weapon by a twisted helix model from your army against that unit, add one to the wound roll. That's super cool. I like that. I think that's super. Super strong and uh, really helps you just like grind through uh, just hordes of, of dude bros. I think that'd be great against like orcs and stuff like that when you charge in like an aberrant squad with picks into orcs. Um, adding one to the wound roll is going to be super helpful there. I like that a lot because then you're wounding them on twos, I think, at that point, which is pretty cool. Uh, so good stuff there. I like that. It really buffs the psychic powers that we get there. So I think that's a pretty good, 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 good stuff that they've got going on there. And then we've got the Gene Stealer Cult name generator. So I will be. Uh, Kreen Valka. I like that. Um, these are always fun. They're always cool ways to give that. So, uh, But yeah, so that is uh, the the rules that they've got for the Gene Stealer Cult. Um, I think I think everyone got some really good stuff. I'm really happy with what they've what they've been doing here. Um, I'm super excited to try the stuff with the uh, the um, the Ordo Tempestus now. We're running the Tempestus Science. It really gives me a, a fuel under my butt to. To finally build and paint out that that force that I've got going on there, I think a lot of the stuff making your own regiments is going to be fun. I think making your own cult is going to be fun. Although now that we've got special psychic powers for the given cults, um, makes you pause and wonder what you want to do with all with all those ones. So maybe a detachment of each at that point, but then you're not really. I don't know. We'll see. I'll see what it is comes there. I think there's some cool stratagems uh, giving me some new ideas of how to make it work because, like I said previously, we we're all about like deep striking and then charging. Perhaps the call now is deep strike turn two uh, behind walls and in cover and like out of line of sight, and then turn three we just advance up and charge with those uh, new site with those with that new uh, with the new stratagems that they've got going on there. So or a combination of the two, perhaps you know, uh, maybe what you do is turn two. Uh, you you no, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it seems it seems like they, there's some there's some cool stuff that you can do there, uh, which I think is going to be fun. Um, and all in all, I like I like what they've got going on here. Um, like I said, I think I would have liked to have some more stuff from the Gene Stealer Cult on how to get into combat. Um, and I understand. I think I think the reason that they're doing these bubbles to keep them out is that they don't. Uh, as much as combat really hasn't been a big thing, it really it really disrupts a lot of armies. And I think they're giving them uh, a lot of these armies the ability to try to keep that from happening. So. If on the one hand they did that, and then on the other hand made it easier, although I guess they did it with the Blood Angels, giving them the plus one inch to their charge uh, with their with their chapter tactic. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm excited about getting to use them. I definitely think every single army that they've got in here um, is stronger for having these rules than not. Uh, it just comes to be uh, to figure out what we can do with it uh, going forward. So uh, I hope you guys have all enjoyed this. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always, and until next time, have fun.